not acknowledge that I have come and I live under the yoke of the devil. I don't want to live. I don't want to live under the subjugation of the kingdom of darkness. I believe in power. I'm a creature of power. I was forged by power. I was created for power. I have been given power. If it will ever be, then it will be by power. All right, let's do Bible study for 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, glory. Glory to God. <laughs> for 15 minutes, let's look upon the perfect law of liberty. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Amen. The former three times have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So it means there were many apostles. But the apostles unto whom he gave commandment were the apostles that he had chosen. And these ones that he had chosen because they such as were not chosen. And there was no reason for him to show unto them himself alive. You know, the reading says to whom also he showed himself alive. That means to the apostles that he had chosen, there was a responsibility that he had to show himself alive after his suffering. And how did he do that? By many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they were therefore come together, there was a break. In the lecture. So when they came back from break. And they were come together. They asked the question. Will you. At this time. Hallelujah. Will you. At this time. Restore again the kingdom unto Israel. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is an introductory presentation that I intend to do that will be the foundation of the subsequent um, deliverables that is consistent with my own quarter in the conference. You know, everyone came with a dispensation, came with a quarter. This is going to be the foundation of my own quarter. Because the Holy Spirit in Jesus was unlimited and in us, he tabernacles in measures. So we are in custody of quotas. And that's why we can only find the fullness in the conclave, the context of the body of Christ. So I come with a quota. I come with a testament and a testimony. The, the Bible says, and I need you to understand the emotional situation that surrounded the death of Jesus. Just in case you were so passionate about the ministry of Jesus and then you saw him die. It's quite a heartbreak 
it was as if hope was beginning to come into the landscape and everyone was identifying Jesus as the salvation of the people and in the midst of his rising in the midst of his ascendancy he was caught up hallelujah I say hallelujah Amen. and there was an expectation that after that he was cut off everything that he brought and everything that was an accompaniment in his life should shut down and it came to pass that God raised him from the dead but it was not something that was done quietly the people that had to know that he was raised from the dead saw him bodily. But Jesus knew the psychological impact and implication of uh, the death reality. And so when he ascended into the heavens, he decided to apply for a casual leave. A casual leave of 40 days. And when that casual leave was granted, he decided to come. To conduct a refresher course, to conduct tutorials for the people that will carry on the business of extending the frontiers of the kingdom. This educational facility that Jesus established is the basis of all apostolic endeavors upon the face of the earth. And just in case you are into some form of labor, that is not in conformity with that which was captured in the 40-day capacity building program. <laughs> you are running amiss. And it is possible to be running fast in the wrong direction. Hallelujah. Now I'd like us to glean from scripture. Glean a little from scripture. This first statement I want to make, I've made it three times before, and you have heard it, but I still need to make it again before we make progress. And if time permits me, I intend to end in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. At that point, the foundation would have been laid. Then we'll now do the subsequent buildings on that foundation. First of all, look that wrote the book of Acts of the Apostles made a reference to a former treatise. And I would like us to consult with Luke in the first, his first treatise, the former treatise that he was making reference to. Uh, probably we might find some foundational emphasis upon which to base the realities that are captured in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Turn your Bible just like we did um, Acts chapter 1. And Acts chapter 1 verse 1 it, it reveals that the person that Luke was addressing in the book of Luke happens to be the, sex, the, the same person that Luke was addressing in the book of Acts. So let's do Acts chapter 1 verse 1 and find out the context and the reason for the endeavors and the initiatives that Luke began to pioneer. There is a former treatise that we need to um, research into in order for a foundation of uh, the understanding of the book of the Acts of the Apostles to be robust enough. In the book of Luke chapter 1, oh my, technical man, can you help me? It says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed amongst us. I would like you to understand the burden that this man is walking with. This man is saying that it has become popular for so many people to speak about Jesus. This man is saying that unaccredited entities have taken it in hand to talk about Jesus because the issues about Jesus have become popular. So it is very possible for the matter of Jesus to be exploited, to be explored as a reason for many, many things because it's a popular thing to talk about Jesus. I'm saying at that time, this day, Sunday sun, 
um, punch the headlines, you find something about Jesus. Because somebody died, he was certified dead, and suddenly uh, they could not find his dead body. So there were so many people that had some explanation for the things that have happened. So it was popular in those days to talk about Jesus. But Luke was saying, are you with me? Are you here? Just like now it's very popular. A herbalist can leave his practice, put on suit, put on a collar, and come behind the pulpit and is practicing the same stuff. Because Jesus is business. You didn't say amen there. <laughs> when we do Jesus, is great business. You, you can get a lot of money if you know how to play your cards. A bank manager was educating a pastor. He said, the way you are running that thing, nothing runs like that and survives. If you want to run this thing, come take a loan from the bank. You garnish the place. You make the place look. You see, what you are doing is more psychological than spiritual. The people that know the business behind what we are doing understand the psychological dimensions which you are not exploiting. Oh my God. There should be a vote. A vote that moves the offering box. You don't need to stretch. That, this locomotive kind of no, 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 no. A vote. The thing moves. So you, you, you will be ashamed if you are going to drop something that is not substantial. Because it's, it's automated. It's automated. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And the vote is transparent. <laughs> Amen. And so just in case you came with coins, when the vote is passing, you go in tongues. Bow, oh, 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 because if you drop it, there we know. The bank manager was teaching the pastor how to do business. Because it's popular to talk about Jesus. It's profitable to talk about Jesus. And that's the new trade in town. And it's not just now that that kind of scenario found expression. It was heavily available in the days of Luke. And Luke had to justify the reason why he was coming into this business of talking about Jesus. And you find that in verse 2. I'd like us to read. Even as they delivered them unto us from the beginning, were eyewitness, eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Yes, next verse now. It seemed good to me also, having perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Now he was writing unto Theophilus and the authority from whence his writing was based was that he received the lively oracles from those guys that were eyewitnesses of the world. It means he's a product of discipleship. It's a product of a meticulous process of the passing of knowledge and reality. He's in custody not just of knowledge but he's in custody of the spirit of reality that is the evidence that the knowledge is from heaven and on the strength of that he felt that the name of jesus was being bastardized in his generation and so he had to come into the game of talking about jesus not because he wanted to implement the business possibilities that were therein but he came as a son of order to set things in order Now, what you are not seeing is that the scenario here is that a, a mayor had given his life to Christ. And he needed the disciple. If the governor of your state gives his life to Christ, do, do you have something to tell him? What is the metric? That's a wise man. He knows politics. He knows the dynamics of economy. He knows he's not a novice. And if you are going to present the gospel to him in a systematic fashion such that he will get to understand and apprehend the dynamics of our God. What will you tell him? That's when you will know whether you know God. It's easy to do. But when you go to on this kind of a mission, it's not will not be 
sufficient. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. This is a skillful, a skillful, systematic progression of the truth about God as it is enshrined in the word of God and also to communicate the spirit of this reality as it was received from the eyewitnesses. And only a chartered Christian can do this. For this kind of duty to be performed, only chartered believers have the capacity to do this kind of business. Now, let me stay with me. Let's do another. This is the first case study. When someone is trying to address a mayor, a man that is in authority, a man that is not a, an intellectual novice, and you are trying to bring him and to instruct him in the ways of the law. There is a kind of training that you need to receive in order for you to qualify to do this kind of business. And the subject of his, his, his liturgy was to set in order those things that are most surely believed amongst us. That's what the apostles called the faith. The faith are the articles of our belief system. And this guy was theologically grounded in the faith for him to be able to lead a man that was an intellectual into the heartbeat of the workings and the dynamics of God. Do you realize that this kind of ministry is, is, is lacking? This kind. Oh, okay. Stay with me. Uh, turn, turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians. Before we start this act, let us see many scenarios. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Are you Are you here? If you are here, say amen. amen. And those of us that are outside, if you are still with us, say amen. amen. Now, where is the man, the, my, um, my uh, violin man? We touch it. Let's be sure it's connected to, to the light point. Is it connected? Okay. Because we are going to saw. Glory to God. Now, I have to, I have to ask him to come. <laughs> Labo man. <laughs> oh, you are welcome to Zion. You are welcome. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter twelve. It says now. Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Before we proceed in the reading, I'd like you to understand a fracture. There is a fracture in this scripture. And if we do not identify and isolate the fracture, your understanding of the scripture is going to be limited. In, if you have a good Bible, and I hope you do, you will notice that the word gift is either in italics or in bracket. Check your Bible. Is that what you find? The meaning of that is that that word gift was not in the original manuscript. The translators added it. So that it should make some kind of sense. But today in our reading we are going to remove it. Ah, are you here? Are you here? There's nothing wrong if you read it with it. But I'm saying in this lecture today, we will read it without it. Okay? So there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. So if we read it without it, what will it read? Now concerning what? Spiritual. So the subject that Paul is addressing is what? The spiritual. 
and in the subject called spiritual there are three aspects he said concerning spiritual brethren I will not have you ignorant next verse you know that you were Gentiles carried away onto this dumb idols even as you were led next verse wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called it Jesus accursed and that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost now there are diversities of gifts for the same spirit listen are you with me concerning spiritual the first aspect of spiritual is gifts so he says what now concerning spiritual gifts now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit number two there are differences of administrations or ministries but the same lord number three there are diversities of operations but it is the same god which work at all in all are you with me so we have three things there we have gifts and the umpire for gifts is the spirit we have ministries and the umpire for ministries is jesus then we have operations and the umpire for operations is god the father all of this under the broad heading what spiritual are you there now move move backward go to verse and the reason why the subject was was on spiritual paul told us why in verse in verse 2 Paul considered the background of the people where they were coming from he said you know that you were Gentiles carried away by, by these dumb idols even as you were led so the, the Corinthians were the people what do they call it in, in Ghana you either call it Ifa priest Ezemo, I like that one. I don't, I don't know two words in Igbo language. Egbe and Ezemo. Ezemo. Hallelujah. Nagba Egbe. Bam. Now, what do you call it in Ghana? Touch her, touch her. Okay, she's, she's meditating on it. These guys were Ifa priests before they gave their life to Christ. And the responsibility of Paul was to disciple former Ezemus. If you are the pastor that will disciple these people, what will you teach them? Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me. Because we are in the apostolic age. God is restoring the apostles back to the body of Christ and one of the duties of the apostles is to establish the doctrine of Christ. It means the quality control mechanism that God has domiciled in the church will become functional again by the appearance of apostolic ministry. Do you realize that when Paul wanted to educate these people, he didn't use a Bible study outline. No outline will work for an Ezemo. The guy is educated in the spirit realm. It's just that his access into the spirit realm was through the instrumentality of a spirit of error. But he's not a total novice of spiritual matters. You need to be an icon in the spirit to educate him. Who will be the lecturer of this, this guy? Have you read that scripture that said, Whom will I teach wisdom? And unto whom will I reveal understanding? The understanding quotient of the body of Christ is on a, an all time low. And that's why falsehood is, is making a boast in the marketplace. The only way Paul was able to educate them 
was that he himself had encountered God in the spirit. Can you see that kind of a subject concerning what? Spiritual. Because the Eskimos were saying, we also enter the spirit realm. We used to see things there. So in order for him to ground them accurately on how to handle the spirit realm from the vista of the spirit of light, then he gave them two laws of the spirit. Two. The first law is that no man that is operating by the spirit of God will ever call Jesus a cost. He will not contradict the authority of Jesus. And the basis for that is Romans chapter 5 verse 10. Romans chapter 5 verse 10 is a two-edged sword of spiritual reality. Can you show me Romans 5 10? In Romans chapter 5 verse 10 we have, it, it reads, and I quote, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, the death of Jesus provided the legal premise for the possibility of the experience of organic realities so jesus provided the legal premise every spiritual thing that doesn't have a legal foundation cannot be established there must be a legal premise that is the foundation the basis of holding down a spiritual thing and causing it to be established and the death of Jesus provided the, the, the legal side. And it's on the foundation of the legal side that has been provided that we experience the living side. So the Holy Spirit's ministry is predicated on the legalities that the ministry of Jesus provided. So it's a living expression of the legal provision. And so the Holy Spirit's ministry cannot contradict the ministry of Jesus. It's a continuation of it. For some others, God will put the burden of some nations. Malawi, Rwanda, Uganda. But there is an assignment for everyone. It doesn't matter where you walk, that's your walk, that's your job. But your calling is your walk.